Okay. So we're coming up now, going over the basics about channels, channel structures, defining it by function, how consumers look at their service output. We basics now. So now we're in the process of actually building a channel system. And the next chapters will entail the three basic questions. Build. Chapter four is going to be about make or buy. Two, five, about channel intensity, and then about channel type. The make or buy decision is what we'll be talking about today. Channel intensity is about how aggressive or how active you are in the market, whether you are selective, convenience item, and then channel type method of distribution that are out and one of them will include dual distribution which is when the manufacturer also has an open store in competition with the retail but this is the one we're going to talk about first so You need to find these channels are where you start whenever you're starting a business. You start traditional horizontal structure. You should. Anybody you're about to are thinking of getting in? You're going to be talked about when you get your MBA is the fact that to build a successful business, you need to have a, something that is unique about yourself that is different from any other corporation, all right? You do that one thing better than anyone else does. The concept's known as a core competency. It means that you have this unique speciality as a corporation and nobody else does. What MBA classes and graduate classes tell you is, is that successful businesses focus on core competencies and nothing else. In other words, if you notice in the university structure now, uh, so, um, excuse me, we own the commissary, we own the library, but there are many other universities, if you'll notice that, um, was it Borders or Barnes and Nobles is now running their bookstore. Find that Cisco is running their commissaries. Um, what's happening is, is there's a restructuring in universities across the United States that say universities are centers for learning and nothing. And that's why you see them, some universities get out of the housing business, they get out of the food business, they even get out of the library business. Now, why, boom, or excuse me, why does Apple say not? Because we consider our we consider our cafeterias part of our core competencies. It is the uniqueness of App State that, that draws us here. We use our cafeterias also as a way of conduits for farmers in and around this area to be able to sell goods. And so anyway, I'm going on on this, but I want you to understand success in business, and you're going to be told this many times, is you devoting to the thing you do best and buy the rest. And that means. Anybody know where Nike factories are? It's a good good answer. And the truth is, is that Nike doesn't own a factory. Nike's business is design and shoe performance. Those two things. They have something that they wish to make and you 
back, whether they're able to make a new shoe. They bid those out. We have not made the shoe. They do an interesting thing too. They'll also allow that factory mm -hmm. that is making the shoe to make 10000 And what Nike can do to those shoes is sell them to Walmart or to sell them to shoe tech. And so it is not unusual for the generic shoes because they don't have a Nike logo on it's possible that that is a Nike design, but it doesn't have So just, just a thought. So anyway, I'm going on about this. This is the way you traditionally look at systems. There's a, instead of horizontal, vertical, <clears throat> is a thing not only User. And instead of a horizontal system, that's what's known as And that leads us into our conversation for today. So, what is make or walk? It is the question vertically integrate or outsource? Make or buy is the question of whether to vertically integrate or to outsource. Outsource is when an organization to decide to buy the services of the department. I'm a manufacturer. Hire a trucking corporation to make my goods. They'll take it to a wholesaler, and hopefully, that wholesaler will have a good retail structure and my goods will be sold. But I only pay one price. I pay that one price to the truck, pay a price to the wholesaler, and some price I will pay to the retailer. Gradually, what I hope is to get a certain level of profit and allow other organizations to carry those goods to my consumers, and they'll make them. Each organization in a horizontal system is their own corporation. They have their own reasons for being in business. But there are enormous advantages in the buy position versus the make. Enormous. In a set standard, you start with the buy decision. Because the channels have functions, and every function carries a cost, every function must be considered when deciding to go from buy to make. Just for dictionary sake, integrate means to take inherited elements and to take them into a singularity. And so that's like there's dictionary. And so when you talk about vertical integration, just put that in your head. The company owns all the channels all the way down. So there's two ways that you can vertically integrate. The first way is the manufacturer who owns the goods goes forward or downstream. In other words, they start as a manufacturer and they integrate the distribution function all the way down. Which is the or the other way around, which is the backward or the upstream, where a distributor or a retailer will produce their own branded form of product. So has anybody been to the Aldi kicker? Okay. So Aldi is one of those corporations that's unique. It's Europe, it's German. And, and Aldi has a particular way in which they are um, they are good. They have around 
the majority of their goods are brand goods. They feel like well, that they have their, basically set up their operation, their way of, of achieving success is in the structure of the uh, supermarkets and goods they sell. And so they, in essence, if you think about it, are back. But Walmart, of course, is big enough to be able to overcome all of the issues that that are happening between build, uh, buy, and make. So they don't have the corporations have. But that's backward, back or upstream, downstream. Yes. You have to make sure everybody is on it because it is a fundamentally changing of your entire organization structure. And usually what happens is it's compounded by a change in the purpose of a business. So I like to go on about IBM. Um, IBM stands for International Business Machine. They've been around for nearly 100 years. They've made office equipment of all types. But it's when the computer age came in at about 67. Of course, they had computers before then, but the IBM 36 was the mini computer, let's just say, that, that brought computing to the masses. Um, it would allow even the smallest regional banks to be able to afford computers and then organizations downstream as well. So if you look at IBM, International Business Machines, difficulties with the focus has always been on their machine. Well, the world changed when we got in the 80s and the PCs, and we saw the kicking in of what's known as Moore's Law. Anybody know what Moore's Law is? It's a computer law. It's, it's, it was proposed in uh, 1965, and basically what it says is the number of transistors every three years double, while the price will be cut in half. And it's relevant work for almost 60 years now. The number of transistors that are that have effectively doubled. And if you look into the throughput, which is the pathway from 8 bits to 16 bits to 32 bits to 64 bits, it in essence has been a major change. The problem with this is that if I bought a computer in 1980, it's not going to take off long before the computer is obsolescent. Obsolescent different from obsolete. Obsolescent just means that a better model's come along. Obsolete means it's no longer functional, like whale, bo whale bones for women's courses. That would be an example. So anyway, They got out of the PCs in 2003, got out of the laptops in 2007, Lenovo laptops, by the way, IBM technology. Um, and they did their model completely from selling computers to leasing the systems and the cell maintenance contracts. But why do you do that? What would be a reason why? Well, one of the ways is it's IBM finally focusing and the customers saying they want a couple of things. One of them is they want to have the most up-to-date technology and they want the best available. So they change from a buy lease. They started doing service contracts. And here's another thing. Instead of the number of products you sell in a year doing this on, on your uh, profit and loss statement, this is what happens when you're selling services and making This is what you're talking about during the year. So these are the reasons we integrate, but you don't take it lightly because vertical integration can almost be yeah. So just quickly, just to show you additional, you might say the difference between this. So there's a horizontal structure. If you notice, it's almost side. They're separate internal <laughs> corporations. Vertical structure for manufacturing, it's a single corporation. 
as I said before, you can also have hybrids. So Apple, Apple sells, uh, from Walmart sells the iPad, the iPhones, I can't remember. However, if you want pros, you've either got two locations, which are the universities, authorized, or Apple itself, which is a true vertical market. So interesting thing about the Apple store, they have the high profit margin per square inch, any retail established world. And that's even So real fast, and there people make salary. So, tough. so I, what you see, however, as, as we were talking, is the choices that happen are not necessarily buying. Nobody is completely buy, nobody is completely make. There's always that gray, murky middle, and, and then you have corporations, as I said, like Walmart, who have such enormous resources that they don't have the problem of moving or switching. Uh, Jerry Jones used to say, I worry about problems that I can solve with money. And, you know, when you're Amazon and you're Walmart, you can solve a lot of problems. So anyway, classical market condition, third party does it for their people, their money, their people, and their game. You do it, it's your money, your risk, your responsibility, your right. You get the reward, all of it. But the truth is, we're more is that we have known as relational governance. And relational governance is, is like a where the channels have some of the and in other words, in any close bit of relationship. There is going to be this commonality hopefully that yeah. This relational government means exactly what it sounds like. It is the norms within the organization that make us cooperate. It is the expectation that we are in business for a long time and we want to get along. And that's what leads this balance to where it is. So make is one endpoint in the continuum. Buy is the other endpoint. And the truth is we live so little and we try to be happy. And so I, I'm, I'm going to just say one more time before we go on. I, I want you to understand that it is vitally important to understand we'll always start by position. Unless the are so compelling that So this is kind of a just a discussion because functions. And so you notice in, in the classic way you have some standard and in the vertical integration what you find is that those are all okay. what it says is, is no matter change the titles you have to have someone doing the channel and there are ways So, I think I'm going on a lot, but I'm going to keep saying it again. Yeah. Every <laughs> function there in the make or buy decision, there are benefits. Control is absolutely beneficial to your operation. And you can explore. And control ultimately brings a greater value to your consumer than by all means do it. The biggest problem actually the 
cost, and it's the second bullet, is that it is not easy to estimate all of the cost of risk. If I'm a manufacturer and I have poor competency and I'm trying to get channels of distribution, I think of it. I spend all my life focusing on one given product, making it the very best that I can. But when it comes to the whole concept of channels of distribution and service to customers, which is extremely complicated, I'm at a disadvantage. Because I can't estimate how much it's really going to cost operation. It actually assumes all the distribution costs Usually the group, especially the personnel, just suddenly realize that you may expand your corporation by double distributions. Whereas if I go with traditional channels, I know how much they're gonna cost. But one last thing, and I'm going to put it in, it's it basically just remember that upstream and downstream taxes are very deep. Okay. Very fundamentally different, I would say. To the point where it's difficult for me to be able to understand what goes on that. Or up. I was a small businessman all my life, you know. The highest that I've ever got to to see a structure like an IBM Center at Hartford, and I can't imagine thousands and thousands. Of That's fantastic. But with everything, there's an opportunity, so you never know. So this was GE, excuse me, IBM. They were capital equipment manufacturers, but they moved to downstream operations. Because they could see that the manufacturing with Moore's Law kicking in constantly was no longer the opportunity that it was. And not only that, but with reverse engineering, advantages are very transitory, very ephemeral. So the competition and the demands, they learned that there was problems or not through the sales, but into the maintenance, and they integrated downstream and they tapped into the very Steady stream of maintenance contracts, and IBM has now become a major contractor for machines that they don't even own because that has spun off an entire. I talk to um, one of the individuals in your class before. He's doing what I used to do. He was an contractor, so he gets contracts from IBM to go fix something. They send him the parts, and he goes to fix it. And that's how this has become successful. But it's not always perfect. What can also happen to be difficult, especially if you buy in, is that you buy into um, operations and cultures that are fundamentally different. And so Alans, which is an insurance company, acquired Dresner, which is an investment bank, and Alans did not have any knowledge in invest. I worked for a bank for seven years. I know what it can be like sitting next to a bank or an insurance consultant. They can have entirely different views on how I should invest. And they will basically say, don't put your money in the bank because it's insurance. And the banker says, insure, put your money in the bank. Goes back. I can't imagine how they expect that to succeed. Anyway, it doesn't always work. So if you're going to buy, how do you buy? What is the coin of the realm? What do you have to spend? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can pay for this, okay? And you have to understand what channel function is being done by whom. And usually those are the ones that kind of set basically how you're paying for it. Now, the three standard ones that you for in a in a common market, or let's just say a one where the corporation is successful, 
And those are margin, commission, and royalty. And so very simply, it is a difference between the reseller's price and the cost of goods sold. That's the margin. Usually margin percentages, but you know, it can be also expressed in dollars. I sold something for 150, my cost of goods sold was a hundred. My margin is 50. Or if you say the percentage is 30 percent. A commission is when you take a fraction of the retail. And so I, the credit card got me enormously rich by slicing 3% off of every transaction. I've gotten to be where cash per over again. You know? I don't want my money percented to death. My wife um, has done a lot of research on cash for society. And then I come in and I say, yeah. Seven days is total cash. Our cash is up three billion just in cash. We're the fifth largest country in the world. Just in cash. Okay. So anyway, I just thought it would be interesting. So commission that fraction of the retail price. And then the royalties is a percentage of the reseller's business. Okay. And so that goes across all things. Are usually more what you find for um, franchise. And so a royalty from a franchise like, uh, oh gosh, McDonald's. McDonald's will do, I think it's 9% royalty off of everything. So, like, if this McDonald's here makes a million dollars a month, 9% of that, before they pay any other bill, gets sent to McDonald's. And so that's what a royalty is. So those are the standard ways in which you can buy it. Very simple, just involves money. Well, there are other areas also tend to be toward entrepreneurial kinds of companies um, that are having to take a risk, and they don't really have a choice. And so one is a lump sum or flat um, to do a job regardless of milestone this much. The next is what's called a functional discount. And a functional discount is where the manufacturer or another partner only pays for their expenses. You know, they just want to cover their the reimbursement doing the business. But the difficulty with that is, is that the manufacturer literally, well, in financial bed with their partner. And, and what it almost does is it causes a potential conflict with other members of the chain. And so you've got to be very careful on that. And the last is future consideration. And this is where you're talking about rights to a future business. And so we become the contract for you. Uh, if you succeed in the next year, then we'll be the distributor for 40% of your product in the next 10 years. That would be an example of future consideration. The difficulty, of course, is that when you're at this level, the future may never come. Um, so in other words, this future that you're planning for may not simply exist, just depending on the success of the organization. The biggest thing, however, as I've said before, is you get to control your own dis destiny, making the decision. It is within your hands, especially if you provide something that's so unique and special, it can't be gone anywhere else, and it is greatly desired and can't be duplicated anywhere else. And so these are decisions. All right, I'm going to be there today because I've got some work. We'll finish up and make the buy options, and then we might swing in for the Thanks. Go ahead. Sure, we have like the extra credit stuff. Credit, okay? You don't have.
Pushing it to the end, right? ECRS, good luck. Oh, okay. Do you need a card? No. Okay, thank you. Yes. Oh, uh, it's all right. Yes. You're okay. No. Good. Thank you. Good job. Yes, you bet. 